Hi, I'm Leslie McVeigh. Welcome to CTN Member Highlight. Uh, today, my guest is Sabrina Keebler. Hi, Sabrina. And you're a client at the IRIS Network. Yes. Yeah. So tell me um, where you're from, first of all. Uh, New York. New York. And you, you've come all that way from New York to be a resident at the um, program at the IRIS Network. Correct. Right. So how long is the program? Um, for me, it's three weeks because I'm just getting an assessment done. But it typically is 12 to 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. And you have a little bit of a problem because you're a senior in high school yeah. this year. So school gets in the way, which is a good thing. <laughs> so now you were born with a sight problem? or Yeah, I was born with optic nerve damage, which takes away my peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. But I do have some central vision. Mm -hmm. And was that discovered when you were a baby? or? Uh, no, actually, I found out how severe it was in sixth grade, but all the way up until then, they just told me I needed stronger glasses. And so then in sixth grade, my teacher was like, you know, she's real, and I was falling very far behind. Mm -hmm. And she was like, she's very smart. I don't understand. I'm not putting two and two together. I think it has something to do with maybe her vision because if I enlarge certain things in certain ways, it helps her. Oh. But it's, she's losing a lot of comprehension skills because she's reading one word at a time. Mm -hmm. So I went through a TBI, and she did a little examination on me, and she's like, yes, this needs to go further. And so from then on, I saw a specialist in extropia, which is just the eye going outward, and he sent me to a neuro-ophthalmologist who then said, yeah, she's legally blind. She doesn't have much field. Oh. So from there, I went to a low vision specialist through the Commission of the Blind in New York State, and they saw the details of the optic nerve and the loss of field and right. wow yeah. how amazing for you too and at that point your world kind of opened up yeah as far as your learning and everything else yeah and years after i've had nothing but high 80s and 90s and oh, you know yeah how amazing and what about um reaction from other students are they understanding of um your vision challenges, I guess. <laughs> Growing up, I never really had any problems. Mm -hmm. People just knew I couldn't really see. But then as I started getting new adaptive, adaptive equipment, they were a little like, what is that? It was either they were very interested and wanted to see what it did for me mm -hmm. or the opposite way because they were kids and kids yeah. can be mean. Yeah. And so as I kept going with the adaptive equipment, I didn't put it away. I kept using it even though it was starting to take, like, I started getting self-conscious of it. Mm -hmm. At first I wasn't, and the kids get, did get used to it. Mm -hmm. And so now they're kind of like, all right, we get it. She can't see. She needs to do what she's got to do for yeah. herself. So I don't really get that many comments anymore. Uh, but, that's great. It's yeah. just like wearing glasses, you know? Exactly. <laughs> so then how did you get involved with the IRIS Network? How did you find out about the program here? My VRC, um, Al, back at, in New York, mentioned a bunch of programs he wanted me to get involved in because he thinks that it would be a better assessment for me on what I could do to help myself. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned the IRIS Network and that he hasn't had anyone go there before and he's heard a lot of good things about it. There are plenty of other people from New York who do go to this program, just not, I guess, in his division. Mm -hmm. So he thought that this would be very beneficial to get an assessment on me. Oh, wonderful. And how has it been your three weeks? <laughs> I've never been away from home before, so oh. it's by myself. Like, I've been with family on vacation, oh. but never, so it's a whole new experience. Yeah. But I really, I really am getting a lot of benefits out of this program. They have a lovely facility yes. here. So, and, and they've made it easy for you to be away. They yeah. take care of you. <laughs> it helps that the people who I'm dorming with uh -huh. are, it's like we're family. We're all very close and at the center, the, you know, the, I don't know if you call them instructor, instructors or teachers, but right. th they're also very, very nice and patient and yeah. Because they, they want to help you be successful. Exactly. It's a great resource center. And what have you learned about yourself over this time being at the IRIS Network? That, you know, back at home, I'm the only one who I know that is considered legally blind. Mm -hmm. So not everyone can relate to me, so I do a lot of explaining. But here, they know where I'm coming from. Once they have a basis of what I can see, they can take it and go anywhere with it, and I can get a lot more than I thought out of something 
back. So I found that there's, there's a lot more to life than just what I was experiencing back at home. And I've seen, I've gotten a taste of independence before college, mm -hmm. and I think it was, it's very beneficial it on helps. me. And, yeah. and, and your family too. Yes. Knowing that you're going to be okay when you, yeah. when you <laughs> yeah. go off. So what are your plans for the future? Um, I plan on going to Marist College for mm -hmm. special education. Mm -hmm. um, that is in New York. Mm -hmm. Or Nazareth College, which is also in New York. It's a mm -hmm. SUNY school. Um, and taking up special education or music therapy. I'm not exactly sure which one yet. So you're a musician as well? Yeah. What do you play or sing? Or? I play the trombone and jazz band oh. because I can't quite see it when sitting down. Uh -huh. So I can adjust the stand and do different things back at home. Or and I play the baritone almost full time. How wonderful. And I do sing as well. And as far as special ed, what sort of area of special ed would you be interested in? I'm not exactly sure yet. Mm -hmm. Most of the past experience that I've had has been with older, mm -hmm. like around my age, a little younger, a little older. So, and I really like that. So I might take up a high school special education, but I'm not sure exactly what, where I want to go yet. And what would you like people to know about um, people who do have challenges with their vision? That y they're not alone and that reaching out to a place like the Iris Network is a great starting point and a great, a great way to keep going. And you'll get a lot of different areas, a taste of different things. The, the vocal rehabilitation counselor exposes you to all different kinds of jobs and majors depending on what area you're coming from, what mm -hmm. age you are, etc. Um, there's lifestyle stuff that they do there. There's a lot of different things that you might not be able to do at home. They can do here and teach you and you can build off of it. Well, you're a lovely spokesperson for the Iris Network. I think <laughs> Thank you. It, it just sounds like a wonderful place and that you've, you've gotten a lot of tools to go forward with the rest of your life. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sabrina, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Right.